Welcome to part five of this Silent Masterclass video tutorial, where we'll be looking at how you can actually use the modulation envelopes to polish and make your sounds better. In part four of the video tutorial, we looked at what every parameter does and how you can turn that on and activate it. So we'll be putting what we learned to, to use in the other video actually into play here. So you can see I have five separate tracks of Silent pulled up, all playing a little bit of a different progression. And I pulled these up and pulled up these specific sounds because they're good examples of some just general tips and tricks that you can apply to leads, pads, chord sounds, and basses. So I'm going to play the first demo here. So that consists of a lead, which is this, and this chord synth. And I do have some, I have the LFO tool on that. And that's basically, if you guys don't know what this is, it's creating sidechain compression. So there it is without. And with. Let's go through, let me open up this first sound here. I'm just going to slow these and play them together. All right, so that is the mono lead. It's a two-part synth using all four oscillators. And you'll see here I have pitch A and B selected and phase A and B selected. And there's no rhyme or reason as to why I made this sound use modulation envelope 2. I probably uh, was tweaking another sound that I had made, and I had already had some, some parameters selected in modulation envelope boxes for number 1, and so I just started using modulation envelope 2. But here's a sound without the modulation envelopes. So you can hear the difference. It's subtle, but it makes all the difference when you're actually playing it with the chords. Like if I turn these off, you'll hear the difference. Now I'm going to turn them on. So you can hear how it's cutting through just that one sound a little better. Now imagine if I had kicks, claps, snares, hi-hats, a bass, you'd be you'd be pressed to kind of, you know, with the sound how it was without the modulation envelopes, you'd be kind of hard pressed to get that to shine through the mix. So what I did was when you when I solo this again and I turn off this pitch, what this pitch knob's doing is it's adding that little clicky sound to the attacks of the note. And it's very high pitched because you're using pitch, obviously. So what that what that's doing is it's allowing it to kind of cut through the mud of the other instruments or the frequencies. So that's something that you can apply to a lot of different sounds in silent leads, basses. So all you do is load up pitch A, pitch A and B, whatever the case may be. I I loaded up pitch A and B because I have all four oscillators activated for this specific sound. And then what you do is you can just either you can do it two ways. You can crank up the pitch A and B, this little rotary knob here, to around seven, 6 to 8, and then just slightly boost this decay a little bit. I'm going to show you what it sounds like if I just crank this decay up. What it's doing is it's boosting the pitch at that time of the decay. That doesn't sound very musical and good, but if you just bump this a little to around like 0.46, um, anywhere from that like 0.40 to 0.50 range, you get that snap in the decay of your sound. So you're not going to really mess with the uh, sustain or the release too much. Now the other option you could do is actually, if I double click this, it'll return back to zero. Just boost it a little bit, like just boost it to around 0 0.60, 50, anywhere in there. And then pull it up again on another instance of the same modulation envelope and push that up to like six and then you get the benefits of both of them so what one is doing is it's kind of adding this almost pseudo vibrato type feel 
because it's a slower pitch bend. And then you can do, to, to really have it cut through the mix, select your uh, pitch A and B again, and then c move the rotary knob up to six, seven, or eight range, and you'll kind of get the, the those two effects together. A little bit of a vibrato, and that snap and click on your attack. And then what I can do, I also had phase loaded up. Uh, I had it up to about 6.29, and I just boosted the decay a little. It's just going to help thicken things up and make the sound less robotic. And I, you can select it for with four-layer sounds. It's kind of fun to select it for just A or B. So I'm going to select it for just A, because in part A I have just I have a saw wave and a uh, pulse wave. So now the uh, phase of oscillators A are going to be a little bit different, which will be nice. If I solo that, unsolo that, and play it with the chords, and now I'm going to turn them off. So you can see on its own, this is a pretty cool sound. It's all right. It's it's the middle of the road type thing. But if you add some of these modulation envelope destinations to it, you actually start to get a really cool sound that's actually starting to be mix ready. All right, so to sum that up, basically you can use the pitch either A and B, A or B, as a way to not only add a little bit of vibrato and pitch bend, you can also add that snap to the attack and decay of your sound to help it cut through a mix. Let's move down to this next sound that's making the chord noise. You'll see that I have cut off A and B and pitch A and B selected. So I'm going to turn both of those off right now and you'll hear the difference. I mean, it basically killed the sound. So when you're doing sound design in silent, you don't always want to crank up the filters as you're making it. That's kind of an annoying sound because of the noise. So I had the filter control all the way down. And then what you do to bring the filter back into play is you use the cutoff modulation envelope destination. And this is really helpful when you're trying to control the decay, the sustain, or the release, or even the attack sometimes of your filter. So if I have this off, the sound's just passing straight through the, the filter uninhibited. And it's sustaining too long, so it would it would take the focus out of the mix because I'm using this patch more as a chord. I could use it as a lead. You know, you could use it as a lead, but I'm using this specific instance as kind of this chord accenting my lead, so it makes more sense to select the cutoff A and B. And then boost the decay, the sustain, the release as such. So you can use these modulation envelopes once you get a cool sound that you like or that you start playing a progression with. You can actually think, okay, how am I going to use this in the context of a song or a mix? Is this the lead? Is this the bass? Is this an accent instrument? If it's a lead, you're going to want to open up the cutoff even more on the filter sections. But if it's something that's accenting a lead, you don't want as much cutoff because you don't want them clashing for frequencies. So the best way to do that is to actually use the modulation envelopes and use the decay, the sustain, the release to control the filter. And then I did the uh, pitch A and B trick on this as well, where I boosted it to actually 10, and then I just boosted this to maybe 0.23 or anywhere in there, just to give it that little bit of attack and that little bit of, of snap so it's not as blah and bland on the decay section. All right, so those are that's those two sounds and what I did with those and how you can kind of use those. So I'm going to mute those. Now let's bring in this one. So same type of thing. I'm using the same uh, destinations, cut off A and B and pitch A. But I am doing it for a different purpose. Let me turn them off. So there is a sound with the same amount of cutoff, essentially. And it sounds cool, but it sounds cooler if you actually use the cutoff A and B here. 
See how there's like a separation in the attacks of the note and the decays? So in a mix, again, I'm thinking these modulation envelopes really help when you start thinking of uh, mixes and, and actual productions. This has much more separation. So that's kind of how I'm using that for those long, drawn out sounds that you might put a side chain compression on. It helps to be able to hear the attack and the decay of your note. Uh, your notes, chords, whatever they may be, very, very clearly. And then also I had this pitch A going on. And that's adding that little squeak. So I actually boosted this to about 2.5 and, and then uh, the decay up to about 0.80, so almost 1. So you can actually really start to hear that little squeak noise. So those are two things that you can do with those kind of sounds that you're going to play elongated chords with, whether it's EDM or not. All right, moving on to this next one. This is a pad sound. Now just as a side note, Silent is not my favorite sound to make, or favorite synth to make pads in. I would actually venture to say that those are some of the hardest sounds you can make in Silent um, just because of the waveforms that you're afforded. So you can do some unique things though with the modulation envelopes. You'll see here I have pan, pan B and Pan A, and it could be Pan A or Pan B. That's just how I did it. No rhyme or reason there. So I'm going to take these off. So it's Pan B and Pan A, right? So right now it's just kind of a sound with a lead sound without much of a cutoff difference, right? Not a lot going on in the sense of making it a pad. Well, what you can do is if you select pan B or pan A, depending on which ones you want to do, and then you pan, I panned one all the way to negative 10 and one to positive 10. So one's basically to the left, one's to the right. And then mess with the decay and the sustain. So you start to get this more spread out feel, but then boost your attack. So you need to mess with the decay and the sustain or the release to actually hear what you're doing. If you just leave those at zero, like we covered in part four, you're not going to hear a change to the sound. But then boost this attack. So then as I'm holding out, so the short, these short notes right here, you won't get an effect. But these long ones, you will. And it will start to pan things left and right. And you can see that on the fade. See how those are dancing around? And now if I boost my attack a little on my actual amp envelope for both part A and part B, because it's a four-part sound, Now that's not the best progression for playing a pad, so I'm going to play something else with more elongated chords. That was a wrong note, sorry about that. So you can kind of see how the faders aren't staying straight and center like my voice is right now. The pad sound's actually kind of dancing around. So that is one trick you can use to make your pads a little bit more expressive inside of Silent. So now I'm going to move down to the last sound here for this little part of the tutorial. It's this bass sound. So if I take this, I just did cut off A. If I take this off, the sound's going to be very different. And if I adjust for the amount of uh, cutoff filter that I lost, it's a totally different sound. So if I bring this cut off A back up, what I'm doing with this is I'm not just using it to open up the filters. I'm using the decay control to kind of make it more of a plucky bass, like an old school mini Moog bass. See, if I just boost the sustain, it's a lot like what I just did when I had the modulation envelope turned off and I jacked up the cutoff. So what you can actually do is you can actually change your sounds. You can change it from kind of this legato monotype bass to something that you could use as more of a plucky type of a bass line or a lead. 
I just selected cut off A with this because this is just a uh, one part sound. I'm only using two oscillators. So that so if I jacked up that sustain, it's gonna be more of a straight up bass as opposed to just doing the decay. And this is just as a side note, is a really good type of bass sound that you can this is a good type of bass sound that you can layer with uh, more digital sounding basses to kind of thicken things up on the attack. So that covers five tips and tricks that you can kind of use in the modulation envelopes to really polish sounds and even change the sound from kind of a legato sound to a very plucky and percussive sound. So the next part we're going to be looking in the next video, we're going to be discussing the LFO panels, and that will be that will be part six of this masterclass tutorial. I'll see you there.